Your Humanities Half Hour is brought to you by the Northern Marianas Humanities Council. And welcome to Your Humanities Half Hour. I'm Katherine Harris. Uh, let me ask you a question. Do you have a book inside of you? Well, there's a perfect opportunity for you coming up next weekend, the How to Write a Book Saipan Writers Workshop. And with us is the workshop originator and facilitator, Walt Goodrich, as well as a couple of uh authors that he has helped get published through this workshop, the first of them being Riza Ramos. Walt, Riza, welcome to the show. Thank you for having us. Oh, thank you. Good afternoon. Well, it's so nice to have you back in studio. Actually, we've talked with both of you before, but it's been a while. And the good news is there's always another story out there. So, Walt, tell us uh, what's coming up with the workshop next weekend. Well, again, thank you for having us on the show, uh, Catherine. Uh, as you mentioned, there is an opportunity coming up next uh, Saturday, April 8th, 2017. There is a three-hour workshop starting at 9 a.m. to 12 noon. It's going to be at the Nauru building. It's sponsored by the Northern Marianas uh, International School. So it'll be room 103 starting promptly at 9 a.m. going till 12 noon. And I'll be going through a step-by-step -step process to help any aspiring author or any published author who wants to reissue their book uh, learn the new model of independent publishing that exists so that they can take their book from an idea to the finished product selling globally on Amazon within the shortest amount of period of time and costing much less money than they ever thought it would. Now that sounds almost impossible. Definitely not something that you can convey or teach in three hours beginning at 9 a.m. How does this work? You would be surprised. I will have a setup there. I'll have my laptop uh, connected to an overhead screen and uh, attendees are also encouraged to bring their own uh, iPads or laptops and I'll actually take people through the process that is required to set your book up in such a way that you can uh, market it and publish it uh, and sell it online. So we'll actually go through the step-by-step -step process that everyone will need to learn. And I, we've done it before several times. This is our fourth workshop here on Saipan. And since then, we've actually had some success stories of people who've gone through the process and have published their books. In fact, one other author a lot of people may be familiar with is Zaldi Danden of the Marianas Variety. But he published a book as well uh, on his, his own just from what he learned at the workshop. I didn't coach him directly. He actually took the information that we presented at the workshop, went back and followed the instructions and published his own book that is now available on Amazon. And what book is that? That is We'll Kiss Like It's Air and We're Running Out of It. <laughs> it's a book of, of <laughs> interesting uh, poems and other uh, thoughts that he's had over the years as editor of the Marianas Variety. So really interesting. And uh, my hat's off to him and congratulations on publishing his first book. He had been talking about it for many years, but for a lot of people since they're not aware of how the publishing industry has changed and how easy technology has made it for people to uh, independently publish, he, like a lot of people, sat on the book and had it in their files on their computer and thought that they needed either a lot of money or a lot of expertise in order to get their books out. But he found out through the workshop just how easy it can be. And the only thing that is missing is just someone to guide you through the process. But once you know the process, you can do it very easily you can even set up a template that you can churn out books, you know, every few months or so if you want to and uh, develop your own catalog. So uh, we'll be going through that process and a answering all sorts of questions that people may have about what it is these days to publish your own book. Okay, Riza, be honest with me. Is it really as easy as Walt is conveying it to be? Uh, yes, it, it, it is easy, but um, uh, discipline includes. Like <laughs> when you write the book, write it. Uh, do it uh, like like you don't want to do anything else. I finished the book in three weeks. Okay, th and you're talking about your latest book. Yes, The Drinking Seawater. Let's talk about that a little bit. What is this story about? It's about Sai, uh, Taipon Sodilor. Uh, which many of our listeners can relate to. What happened with you and your uh, family during Sodilor? Oh, it blows a roof. 
And then, there are so many things that happens. Like, um, we went back to the Stone Age. I think <laughs> there's no power, there's no water. Um, I think everybody could relate to that. It's uh, it's not that just, but if you have a family with with kids, it's different. But as uh, as I've written in the book, it's it's not about the storm, but the rainbow after the storm. Uh, how people help you, the Red Cross, the uh, the um, um, military, FEMA. the FEMA, and everybody else in their small special ways. Mm. Uh, that's the most important thing. That that. Not the storm itself, but how we deal with it. So why did you decide you wanted to take that angle about the book? I mean, there's lots of things you you could have written it as a fiction. I mean, not a fiction, but, you know, like a, a story about uh, your experience. Um, why did you choose to tell this story? Um, I just feel I'd, I'd like to tell you know when 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 you're a writer when you are when you have a book in you uh there's there's a feeling that that I should bring this to the world now and then I think it's it it would be a, a my contribution to the island who's who's, who's very good who's mm. very good to me and my family mm. uh it, it's a very good contribution to to the island like um I'm hoping someday that that the book with, will will um, will be in the map. Like it, it's part of Saipan's history. Um, everybody could relate to that. That once upon a time in August two, there's Typhoon Sodolor, the strongest typhoon that hit Saipan, and um, I feel I should tell it to the world and my contribution to this beautiful island. And well, you also were a contributor on to the, the book? book as well. Yes, I helped her uh, prepare it for publication, do some editing, and put her story in a particular order. But she is being a little humble about uh, some of the content of the book. If, when you get a chance to pick up the book, and it is available at bestseller books here on Saipan, you'll see that we start with her experience in the storm. And one thing that Riza uh, left out just now is that at some at one point during the 200 mile an hour winds of Sotolor on Saipan, she, her husband, and her two children were outside in the storm f trying to find a place to stay while uh, after their roof blew off. So the first uh, chapter or two of the book is actually ab about the storm itself and the effect that it had on our house, on our neighbors, um, people uh, running around, uh, you know, trying to find a place to stay right after their homes got destroyed. So there is that powerful introduction before we get into what happened, the aftermath of the storm and how Saipan coped with it. So it, it, it starts out in a very exciting place where you actually uh, get an idea of what it would be like to be out in the with no electricity in the in the neighborhood in the middle of a category five storm with your children you know uh to take care of uh, the title of the book is drinking seawater what why did you choose that title and did you have to drink seawater um uh literally it's not um it's my father who who inspired me about the title because he, he actually saw a national television in the philippines about what happened in Saipan, and then um, it, he he says like, uh, there's no power, there's no water. That that that's what he saw. And then when I called, he said, oh, uh, what are you drinking? I said we're drinking seawater <laughs> from the marines. Ah. Yes, they converted. And then I I said, uh, don't worry, I'm in America. Uh, we we have marines here. Who, who how can you drink seawater? And then I, I explained to him the process. Desalinizing. And, and then the the old man is really amazed because he, he, he hasn't really, he's not really like a reader or he doesn't know anything about that. And then I think it's a good book title, <laughs> Drinking Seawater. Well, I have to say, hearing you explain it, I think that's a wonderful angle to take on the on the storm because everybody can relate to it. Either they were helped or they were the people helping the less fortunate. A in fact, I was in a meeting with the head uh, FEMA official that was here and uh, uh, she said that out of 
all of the the disasters she has responded to she is absolutely she was absolutely amazed at how the local community here in Saipan pulled together and of course we had a lot of support from uh, you know brothers and sisters throughout Micronesia but she'd never seen a community pulled together like we did to help mm-hmm. each other so um very exciting yes. to have this publication out um and this is actually your third book yes it's my third book tell us uh refresh our memories on what the first two were uh my first book it's an i called it accidental book because it was made out of my son's project and then um that book is the boy who dreamed to be with his parents on saipan and then the my second book it is about me as a nurse it's a germ stopper boy uh, uh, to summarize it's, it's it's all about hand washing wow it's hand washing in a simple ways and For, then the and what i like about this book right off the bat is that y- in, in the artwork you actually see islanders <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> so it's it looks like a a nice uh, resource for a school library as well as families. William Regis is uh, uh using that William Regis library. Oh, okay. Well, that's wonderful. Walt, all of this um information you're giving to make this possible for authors like Risa. I mean, um very valuable. How much is the workshop? It is only $10. Uh that's my Saipan rate. <laughs> oh and we <laughs> so love the Saipan rate. <laughs> it's ten ten dollars to attend. And I'd like to make a special offer. Anyone who is listening uh well let me say first, ten dollars to attend in advance if you pay in advance, uh by going to the Saipanwriters dot com website. Uh twelve dollars at the door. Five dollars for students, high school students or college students. I was going to say I'm a student <laughs> learning for <laughs> life. If, if you bring uh, an ID, you'll get in for five dollars as well. But I'd like to encourage people to actually register in advance at the Saipan Writers Workshop for two reasons. One, I'd like to get an idea of who is coming so I can know uh, to prepare. And also, as an independently published writer, you will be asking the world to go online and purchase your book, whether it's through Amazon or your own website, which you'll set up. So I'd like to encourage anyone with a book idea to go through the process themselves. Go to the website, sign up, and so you are familiar with what it is like to sign up and purchase something online. I mean, a lot of people have done it, but I find here on Saipan a lot of people with book ideas in them are still thinking of selling books the the old-fashioned way, the traditional way. Uh, so I'd like to encourage you to get some experience doing things online, either s- using PayPal to send the registration fee to workshop at saipanwriters.com or by going to the we- uh, website saipanwriters.com and uh, s- signing up online and prepaying in advance. And for anyone who does that, I'll have a little gift as well. Anyone who signs up in advance, I'll give a free copy of one of my other books called Ducks in a Row. It's for people who want to quit their uh, soul-draining, energy-depleting job and live happily ever after. So I give some advice on how I did that, uh, how I quit my job years ago to jump out and, and do my own thing, follow my passion. So anyone who signs up in advance through the website, they will get a free ebook copy of that, uh, cop- that one of my books. Well, when we come back, uh, we'll be joined by another author that you have helped uh, get self-published. But, Risa, before you go, any final thoughts? Um, everybody out there, if you have a book in you, bring it now to the world. Uh, that's all my, my advice. And if um, I'd like them to attend also the, um, the workshop because uh, it will guide them. And then if you... Uh, for example, like me, I, I already have the idea of the book, and then the workshop really helped me bring it to the world. So thank you very much. So you've actually been to more than one workshop. Uh, yes. Uh, you go, even as a publisher, author, you go again. Uh, and yes, again. I, I go again and again. <laughs> like uh, mastery is the... It's Repeti- in the <laughs> repetition. <laughs> repetition <laughs> is the key to, it's the key to mastery. So mm-hmm. I always attend workshops. All right. Well, thank you so much. And again, congratulations on your book, Drinking Seawater, now available at Best Seller. Thank you. And we'll be back after this break. Half a day. This is Eulalia Ariola of the Northern Marianas Humanities Council. Did you know that you can donate up to $5,000 to the Humanities Council through the CNMI Education Tax Credit Program? 
Donations from individuals and corporations qualify and can be used to offset your local wage and salary tax, BGRT, and earnings tax. Call our office at 235-4785 to see how you can support Humanities programs in our community and obtain a tax credit for your donation. Sizu Usma'asi, Olomai, and thank you. Welcome back to Your Humanities Half Hour. We're speaking today about how to write a book, the Saipan Writers Workshop. And here back in the second half of our show is a Walt Goodridge. And joining us is one of the newest authors that ha- is a graduate of the workshop and has made his book a reality. No stranger to us, of course, here in the islands, Dr. John Joyner. Dr. Joyner, welcome to the hey, show. Thank you. I'm glad to be here with you. So your your book is entitled This Baby Can Speak. Okay, what is this all about? Parents are concerned about communicating with their children and helping their children learn how uh, to communicate the discoveries that they're making. And uh, this is to provide some tips for them to assist their children in that development and have an understanding and appreciation of the sequence that occurs. So that's the uh, primary goal and function of this book. Now, this book <coughs> actually is this book actually is um, kind of I mean it's it's very simple to understand, but it, the the concept is I feel a little bit academic compared to some of maybe the personal stories that are coming out of the workshop. How did you come up with the idea to uh, do a a as it's called a bilingual development guide? I appreciate your recognition of the simplicity. Uh, One part of the presentation of this book is to help persons appreciate the simplicity of life and the simplicity that the children are going through. So frequently we make the life development complicated and that helps to bring about distress in the child. To the extent that we do that, that helps to Uh, delay the development of the child. The human organism is developed in such a way that it's it's so simply, wonderfully, magnificently made. And so that's part of the presentation of this child can speak. Who is this book targeting as a reader? uh, Parents. Those who have primary care uh, of a child's development. It targets that relationship between the parent and the child. Uh, And it's a two-way, and I think that's important because the child, in her development, is providing uh, information for the parent to pick up on. Frequently, parents look at, I'm providing information for the child to pick up on and not appreciating the two-way street. You know, just looking at the book briefly, there's a phrase in the introduction that, um, there's a sentence that jumped out at me. It says, each child is a special, unique person with his own timetable for learning to talk and for growing up. You are his first teacher and his most important teacher. And that is addressed to the parent, of course. Let me ask you, the uh, the things you present in this book um, for parents to consider the concepts. Are these things that you learned as a parent yourself, or where did you get this information from? Uh, This knowledge? Observation of uh, who we are as human organisms. Uh, Of course, I have academic degrees that speak to the development of children and speak to the uh, Uh, psychology of the human organism but the reality is how do we actually look at what it is that we feel and experience with what some people call little adults they're not little adults Uh, each child has that uniqueness that we must come to appreciate frequently we're taught that Uh, I come to the child as though he is a he or she is a representative of some mm, group of um, organism, but that he or that she is special and unique and unlike anyone else who exists at that time or has ever existed, and I, as a parent, must 
free myself to experience that uniqueness at those times of development. And so that's kind of uh, what this book is about, is helping to appreciate the uniqueness of the relationship between yourself and your child. It's a, it's a beautifully um, designed book with uh, photos in it and very simple uh, tips and concepts to think about on each page. And it's in English and Chinese. Everything is written in, in English and Chinese. Why is that? Why did you decide to do it that way? We have a, what we call a um, number of different nationalities and ethnicities on the island. And uh, having that large number, we have uh, different languages. One of the ever-growing languages in the Commonwealth is Chinese. And uh, we even have an industry where people come uh, to the CNMI to deliver a baby. They come pregnant, and as such, when they come, many of these persons are Chinese. Mothers from China have an interest and need to uh, communicate with their children and to communicate with the community in which they find themselves. And one of the languages they want to learn is English. And so I thought, well, since you're here, during the time you're here, Perhaps we can assist you in learning English and help you learn that by utilizing the language you already know, which is Chinese. And so the decision that we made was to develop a book that would be in both English and Chinese, which has turned out to be kind of fun because the mothers are actually learning English through the, the use of this book. They're able to use a language that they know and are familiar with to learn a language that they want to learn. So it's kind of fun. And what happens, of course, children learn whatever language is presented. Children are not aware that it's English. Children are not aware that it's Chinese. Children are aware that it's a language. And so that's kind of fun. Now, you have two collaborators on this book. Walt, what, what was your part in this publication? My part was to coach John and our Chinese translator through the process and also to uh, find the photographs that we used. If you notice, uh, when you look through the book, it's, we have a lot of different uh, representative examples of families. We have uh, single-parent families. We have multicultural, multi-ethnic, multiracial. So the book actually gives examples of each of the tips. Uh, the individual tips on all 200 pages is either represented by a... Uh, uh, an interracial family or a Chinese family or a um, um, Middle Eastern family. So we wanted to give a really broad spectrum of images so that people could see child raising in all its different facets, not just you know one, uh, one group. And one of the things also that uh, you mentioned, what John, Dr. Joyner's book is a fine example of one of the tips that I give in the workshop, which is when you think, when you have a book that you're thinking of publishing, Think about ways that you can create a series of some sort, sort of like the chicken soup for the soul series, where you have chicken soup soup for the golfer's soul, chicken <laughs> soup for the teacher's <laughs> really? soul, they chicken soup. <laughs> so you have all of these. So when you come out with your book, think of a way that you can expand it so that you can create a series. So this is the Chinese version, but there's also a Spanish version, uh, and there's a Japanese version in the work, and there will be a Korean as well. So this is what you're looking at now is just the uh, Chinese iteration of, of this book. Now it's it's 152 pages, but uh, and it easily read through in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. But if you take the time to to really think about one page, a toddler learns things by doing things. She must be able to to do. She must want to do. Always make it fun for her to do things. If you just meditate and work on this for a day as a parent, <laughs> what a difference it yes, can make. Absolutely, and that's uh, how how do you actually get a philosophical approach and truth as that into something as simple as that. And so that's uh, what we brought to this particular publish. And publication. where is this book now available? Right now it's available on Amazon.com in the color versions as well as uh, black and white. And it's also available on Dr. Joyner's website. It is www.thisbabycanspeak.com. This baby can speak. 
Um, what is it you really hope our listeners will walk away with? What is it you want people to know and feel when they get this book in their hands? Buy the book. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure every author wants the validation of somebody buying their book. I want them to walk away knowing that it is possible to communicate with your baby from day one. Uh, I, I, in the book, we even talk in terms of communication with your child, the mother, uh, while the child is in, in embryo, uh, the fetus, uh, this communication that can and does occur. And so that's what I want them to walk away with. That is, We don't have to look at charts that talk in terms of how many months it takes for children to make sounds. They come, they, they're born making sounds. And our responsibility is to help create environments in which those sounds can be grouped into something that we later call words. So uh, that's what I want them to walk away with, the simplicity of communication and, the, and its importance uh, in the relationship between the parent and the child in that process. Dr. John Joyner, his publication is This Baby Can Speak, and you can find it at Amazon.com. Walt, tell us one more time about the workshop, the details, and your final thoughts before we go. Uh, thank you. Uh, yes, there is a workshop coming up, and some of the authors who we've successfully published will be at the workshop as well. So Dr. Joyner will be there. He'll have copies of his book on sale. Riza will be there. She'll have copies of her book so you can see what they look like, see the quality, uh, see what's possible for you as well. The workshop is going to be Saturday, April 8th, uh, 2017, from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. It's a three-hour workshop. And it's at room 103 on the first floor of the Nauru building, the 360 building, um, Marianas Business Plaza. It goes by all those different names. And it's sponsored by the Northern Marianas International School, of which uh, Dr. Joyner is also principal, by the way. <laughs> so uh, I encourage people to pre-register at saipanwriters.com. And uh, as I mentioned, there'll be a free copy of one of my books for those who pre-register uh, for $10. And f uh, $5 for students, college or high school, $10 for adults. Very affordable, and we've heard today some of the success stories coming out of this workshop. As Riza said in the first half of our show, if you have a book inside of you, um, Walt has certainly helped many bring their books out, and so you're invited to sign up and attend the workshop. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Thank you for having us. This has been Your Humanities Half Hour. I'm Katherine Harris. This program was supported by a We the People grant awarded to the Northern Marianas Humanities Council from the National Endowment for the Humanities. Any views, findings, conclusions, or recommendations expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily represent those of the National Endowment for the Humanities or the Northern Marianas Humanities Council. Mm -hmm.